Good morning or afternoon. Thank you for joining Safety Chains Food Safety and Quality Operations Tools for Success webinar. We're delighted to have you with us today. Before uh, we get started, I'm just going to go through a few housekeeping tips and then we'll go ahead and get going. My name is uh, Joe Bender. I'm the VP of Marketing here at Safety Chain and delighted also to have Dave on the phone with us. Dave Delar with the Safety Chain VP of Sales. Good morning, Dave. Hi, Joe. Good afternoon for me on the East Coast. <laughs> yes, and, and we have quite a few people joining us as we talk, so I know everyone's um, all over the country, and we appreciate everyone um, joining us. A few things before we get started. Uh, for privacy, you should only be see, able to see yourself and the panelists, although uh, WebEx has given us a run for our money this morning, not quite working correct, so hopefully uh, everyone's still having a good viewing um, on, on the site here. Also, for audio, it is automatic via your computer speakers. However, you do have the option to call in as well. And if you uh, go ahead and call into the number provided in the email, or if you go to Quick Start on the WebEx um, platform, the phone numbers are there. Uh, we will be sending a recording after the session is over in the next few days. And we do encourage questions. The Q&A tab will be remained open. And as questions come up, we'll make this as interactive as possible. Um, and hopefully get to the questions that we have. So with that, I'm delighted to thank you again for joining us. Uh, today's session, we're really going to talk about the technology tools and how they're being incorporated into the food safety quality operations. We'll review some of the challenges and barriers of the operations in general and why, te why technology is having success in helping the teams overcome their barriers. We'll review some of the results being achieved, as well as assessing if technology might be right for your organization. So with that, we'll go ahead and get started. Goal here is to make this as interactive as possible, but with that, one thing we always like to start off with is just talking about the overall goal of food safety and quality assurance. And while there's a lot of talk about reducing risk and compliance management and GFSI and yeah, supply chain, everything. At the end of the day, we know that your goal is to deliver a safe quality product. However, getting to that goal and, and executing upon that goal every day can be challenging. There certainly are barriers. So Dave, as we kind of dig in here, why don't you share with us, what are some of the, the overall themes that you see being out there with our customers and prospects day in and day out? Yeah, thanks, Jill, and, and thanks everybody for joining, uh, for sure. And the the time here, like you, you just mentioned, the goal for everybody on this call, and I have actually had the opportunity to speak with some of you before, so uh, thanks for joining. But the idea that it, we, the whole goal is to produce a, a safe product, but we're all in business to make product too, right? So you, we got to tie those two balances together. And really, these teams, and especially a lot of the people on this phone today, you're really being stretched, right? Because you have specific customer requirements that you're adhering to because that's where your business comes from for sure, right? You gotta keep your customers happy. And at the same time, we've all gone through these GFSI programs now and your SQF or your BRC. So there's those non-regulatory requirements that we've put in place, again, hoping to, to garner more customers as well. And we all are well aware of the things that are going on with FISMA and the FDA and the USDA. And if, for some of our Canadian counterparts, CFIA, uh, up in Canada for you on the phone. All those changes really are putting a burden on the folks on the call today, right? You're capturing more documents, you're required to capture more records, and it, it truly is this perfect storm and a perfect time to evaluate technology to help with some of the, just kind of the laborious detail that needs to go into this. The, Absolutely, the concept, Dave. yes. Yeah, and I, I think you were gonna oh, go into the next one here, Jill. The, the concept yeah. is that we know there's so much to be captured here today, Jill, right? If you look across the screen that you have, you know, receiving and supplier documents, of course, we're all monitoring our HACCP programs, but each of these have oversight and verification and tasks, and you're being requested for reports on a more regular frequency as well. So show me that data now. Uh, the, the thing that we know, though, is that it's not gonna stop, right? The one thing I think we can all come to an agreement on on, this, on the webinar today is that for sure no one's gonna come in and say, by the way, Jill, it's okay, you don't have to capture any of these records anymore. We're just gonna to continue to be asked to capture more and more data and records in, our, in these jobs, right? It's definitely not gonna get easier. Um, and the complexities are gonna to continue to grow, right? There's all kinds of initiatives out there of 
trying to increase transparency in our supply chain, right? And the idea that that requires all of us to do a better job of capturing that information and also making it more available, uh, whether that's to your customers, whether that's to your internal, you know, executives and management teams, whoever that might be, we know that that requirement is going to continue to build for sure. Absolutely. So what I always find interesting, certainly when we talk to customers and so forth, is that, you know, obviously, and everyone can test to this on the phone, is food safety and quality does not happen in the office, right? You know, sort of the oversight and program execution is everywhere. Um, and, and Dave, I know you've, you've walked plants and produce fields and everything to attest to that. <laughs> Yeah, it's the, it's the dilemma that we're all facing too, right, on the phone. When you talk about technology, everybody goes, wait a second, you know, can our organization handle this? Well, I work in a 100-year-old facility, you know, with big cement walls and Wi-Fi stuff, or to your point, we're out in fields with growers and, you know, there's no real connectivity. And will these end users really take to this? The thing that you have to be certain as you're looking at technology tools is that it does fit those applications, right? You have to be aware of some of those limitations whether that is uh, as part of the, just the commodity that you're processing or the items that you're processing, or whether that's actually the location and so forth. But really, when you evaluate technology, the thing that's absolutely certain is that it doesn't just happen sitting at a desk, as uh, many of us are fortunate enough to be sitting here watching this today, but I would assure you that most of you on the call are getting ready or looking over your shoulder back at your plant, and that's where it's happening, or back in your uh, grow or your facility for sure. Right, and, and again, it's then because it doesn't happen, you know, it's sitting at your desk, what are some of the tools that are currently being managed? I think it's funny. I, I just had a chance yesterday to talk with someone, and, and in the top left of your screenshot here, Jill, it, it, it made me laugh, you know, a clipboard. Uh, I, you know, we're starting to have this conversation now with the, the day that you have new employees walk in and you hand them a clipboard. It's like, you know, two or three years ago, the first time I handed my grandmother an iPad, right? It, it's completely foreign. It's not, it's not, it doesn't exist, right? Um, they don't, why have it? Why use it? It doesn't make sense. And this is how we're managing the facilities, at least the opportunity and, and uh, that I've had to walk through facilities and talk with hundreds of companies a lot of our very critical data and information is being managed with pen and paper. Uh, I had a uh, customer tell me the other day, it's you know just a step up from a rock and chisel and how they're doing it before they went to safety chain. The idea it's not smart, it's not giving them anything back and we're using technology for sure. And that's sometimes a, a term that's stretched, you know, oh, we're using Word and we're using Excel. You know, those are 30, 35 right. year old technologies that weren't designed to support food safety and quality systems that we're all using. Um, but typically, this is what we see being done today, and I would assume that many of you on the phone, you have a filing cabinet, right? You have a filing cabinet and a big binder, and, and this is how things have been run for a long period of time. Uh, but, you know, that's the typical way we see it being managed. Either you're writing it down, you, some of you may actually be fortunate enough where you're carrying something around and keying it into an Excel spreadsheet or something like that. Uh, but many times, it's, it's really just uh, <laughs> trying to capture down that data uh, on a piece of paper and filing it away. And, and yeah, I think that I, leads to some of these challenges you're going to mention, Jill. Yeah, no, absolutely. So when you think about sort of the hybrid approach, we'll call it, as far as data collection goes, whether it is routine into Excel spreadsheets or clipboards that are um, you know, filed away or, or um, paperwork that's filed into a binder and so forth, you know, when you think about that, really what does that equate to? Sort of the everyday challenges, you know, often you're, whether it's you're chasing down supplier documentation or receiving logs to look at or trying to see if tasks were completed or requirements are met by looking through forms after the fact. Um, often it's the latent review of data collected. So again, if the line starts at the beginning of the day, um, often sometimes forms aren't reviewed until later that day or even the next day. Um, I'm sure if we were all in a room together, I would be asked how many people have incomplete records, um, something that was missed or a check that didn't get completed. Uh, then we also think about as far as responding to inquiries and audits. When a customer comes walking in your door, you know that they're coming and, or um, there's a call um, either upstream or downstream about a specific item and you have to dig out where the information is. But also just in general, when something is an issue arise, you know, be able to find that issue quickly. So when you think about that, really that equates to overall challenges. Dave, do you want to sort of share that as far as from a global perspective? Yeah. Really, yeah. Well, I think that this is the, it's a kind of an underlying element for the webinar today. And, and as we talk with 
organizations as well, is that there's this change to the speed of business, the change of you doing things. The items that Jill just mentioned, you're doing those today, right? You're tracking down paperwork. You're running through the facility to get information. Um, you're spending time doing that, right? And it, it does, it, it creates a time suck. I, I've talked with many organizations where our QA directors are spending tens of 20s of hours a week uh, in capturing data, rekeying data, uh, in gathering that data together, right? And the idea is that it really starts to put us back in that reactionary model. That's the model, right? Hey, when something happens, I'm gonna find out about it down the line. And, and you don't have that good overview, especially many of you on the phone, uh, you know, you have multiple facilities. You have, how do you have oversight over those facilities? You know, up until this point, it was you had to drive there and see what was actually going on and put the eyes on it. And that's always going to be important, your eyes on it. But I think the, the overall challenge here is that there's really a whole bunch of information that could be leveraged to better run the facility that's living in those filing cabinets and that you're tracking down once a year or based on a customer requirement. And there's data that actually could be quite useful to help run the, the business itself. And uh, that's where we get the data rich and information poor, Jill, for sure. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. Well, then we, we think about that and the way that the overall uh, management of operations day to day with that are the inherent risks. And this would you know, be true with any operation, right? Some of the, the risks that we've outlined here. Yeah, it's, you know, this, this starts to play into, as we're going to talk a little bit later in the webinar, you know, as everyone talks about technology, well, that's nice, Dave and Jill, you can talk about technology, but I don't necessarily have a budget. I, you know, we didn't budget this year for technology. What's the ROI on this? What's the investment? Because that's what my executives are going to talk about. And these risks really start to get us into that conversation, Jill. You know, when you talk about items like, you know, non-compliances or uh, a customer inquiry or your even your start times from a pre-operational and a sanitation standpoint where you're reviewing documents and data to make sure everything's been done appropriately before you start up, uh, never mind the idea of rework and reruns, and that varies organization to organization where that value actually is. But these are the risks that we're helping stop, and you'll see some of that uh, as we go through the webinar later and talk about some of the customers. Um, you know, and it, it's not necessarily as much, I'm sure many of you on the phone aren't failing audits, it's getting ding those points on your audits, right? Making sure that things are in place. Um, you know, the, the customers are driving our business, so making sure that those customers are happy as well. The, the this is really where I, I just started to talk about speed of business and and I meant made that term and what I mean by that Jill is we are really pressed today and all of us I'm sure everyone sitting on the phone here today I'm actually talking on a cell phone here today the idea we all are connected and the idea that that process that we just described of how organizations are capturing data via a spreadsheet and a clipboard. It doesn't support the speed of business that everyone's become accustomed to, just like your customers are becoming accustomed to it, just like now the FDA is becoming accustomed to it. Meaning that when something happens, the quicker that you can turn around information and put your finger on that information, we all know is going to, uh, you know, expedite the process and also eliminate a lot of things that could occur. So managing our processes in a, you know, 30 or a 40 year old Word document and a PDF document and a clipboard and a pen and paper isn't giving you that result that many of you on the phone are being held to, which is that your customer calls you and says, I need this information now, right? Uh, and you say, well, it's going to, you know, take me a couple hours or how about if you could turn that right around? And we've had customers talk about that, that assurance that if they get the call and you've had customers who've gotten a call from the FDA and they, that assurance that they can log into the system, pull all of the information they need at that point and also have the assuredness that a technology has over, overseen it to make sure that it's been verified properly. So the risk is always gonna be an item, uh, you know, we put these out here, everybody's aware of these companies, but the idea here is just, when you're looking at technology, it's that speed of business, it's getting access to that information quicker uh, and also helping to eliminate it from a prevention standpoint rather than a reactionary standpoint, Joe. No, ab absolutely. And I mean, think about risk, I mean, certainly much more prevalent as far as um, noticeability of recalls and situations that have happened in companies much more than, you know, five, ten years ago. I would say even three years ago. Absolutely. So what and that happens because we all have Twitter. Yeah. It happens because we all have Twitter and we all yes. have Facebook. And we, so we all, all use have, the technology, and, you know, we, right? We don't, just, a personal we don't just sit down and, you know, you and I talked about it the other day, Joe, like no one really gets their newspaper delivered, you know, anymore at the house. 
you, you know, we don't all sit around and watch the six o'clock news like I did as a kid, right? Like that's how you would consume your information. Now it's all omnipresent. You know, one thing hits the market and everyone knows about it in minutes. Uh, so we're all, we're all being held to a different standard. No, absolutely. So, so really in order to be critical, um, you know, as far as the success and when you talk about that speed of business that Dave is talking about, really it, it comes down to these four areas. Um, it, and it, again, this is, for everyone on the phone, certainly within industry, you look at this, go, well, this is a no-brainer. Of course it is. But it's interesting when we think about technology and having access to data, um, it really still comes down to these areas, right? You know, ensuring the program execution compliance every day. I mean, it's not a, a, a daily, weekly, quarterly. It's an every day, every moment that you're in operation. Um, the ability to catch issues earlier before they become larger problems. Uh, you know, issues, whether it's a supply that's coming wrong, that's going to have to um, be a rework and or an issue from a safety standpoint. Um, the accessible records and having those easily accessible um, to what David was talking about, whether it's for inquiries, inspections, or perhaps, you know, a root cause analysis. But more importantly, in the last part, this is where it all really ties together with technology and access to data, is that ability to trend performance and, more importantly, having the data to improve performance, and that's not from a quarter review or year review, but an everyday tracking that has impact every day. Anything you want to add to that, Dave? No, I think you hit the nail on the head. There are, back to yeah. that grid that we first showed to everybody, there are thousands of records and documents that you are responsible for on this phone of overseeing and making sure are compliant. And the idea that if, they, if you don't have the tools to help you do this, we never get to that speed of business. Uh, you'll never, it's impossible. You can throw as many people at it as you want, and you'll never get there. Absolutely. So, so when you think about it, going back to what we're talking about, really, you know, what are the true barriers to success? And a lot of that is in the ways that the day-to-day -day operations is being managed, um, whether it is the clipboards not having that visibility of your frontline workers that are filling out those, put, you know, filling out those forms, and, and then your own your, your team zone um, capability for oversight. Um, we often hear the, the concept that, you know, catching a needle in a haystack really, um, I'm sure, resonates well with people today on, on here. The concept of records everywhere. Um, you know, I, I know, Dave, we've talked about this where there's like pallets of records, you know, oh, I needed to check something from six months ago, nine months ago. Oh, that's where is that? It's down the hall in the closet, out in the other shed, wherever the case may be. But again, the idea here is there's a lot of data being captured every single day. Um, so certainly, you know, we can all attest to that this industry is very data rich, but information poor, and, and those really are sort of key barriers in um, in performance. So let's jump into how t how can technology help with all this? And Dave, I know you started talking through this, but let's go ahead and, and dive into that and share some some good examples um, here. So when you think about technology, um, you know, uh, so again, going back to the four key ways that are critical to your success. These really map nicely here. Do you want to share through that with us, Dave? Yeah, for sure. So the idea that, you know, when you talk about technology, what can technology do? And everybody, you know, sometimes technology is even a bad word in organizations, right? Well, you know, we've done it this way for years, and <laughs> mm -hmm. this is how it works. But uh, the idea that what a technology can actually help you with is that oversight initially. So you do have a bunch of programs. We're all following different programs. That could be as simple as your allergen program, as your customer program, as your GFSI program. But the idea that technology can help you make sure those things are being done, right? Making sure, you know, the, the whole thing, you know, do what you say, say what you do, do what you say, and document everything. I'm sure, I, hopefully I got some nods on the phone there for that one. But the idea that this, that's what technology can help you with. It, it, you don't have to be the constant overseer, you know, of, hey, this is what's happening. The, the technology can actually tell you what's going on. The idea that at the same time, all of our latest, you know, regulations and changes of, in this industry have been more towards prevention versus reaction. And technology is a big part of that. Think of your paper forms today. Many times as you look at them and a person fills them out, they read those forms and then they have to pr discern the direction of what they should do. You know, Jill, if you enter this in, then go find Dave to do this. The idea that not only can technology real-time evaluate traits and attributes, like dimensions for your customers and height, weight, and width, but also those temperature control checks, those calibration checks that you're doing as part of your programs, making sure that everything's been done, but also by, uh, verifying that real-time. 
is huge. And then the last two become natural with technology. The idea that now you have all of this information together in one place that you can pull it out very quickly. You can do root cause analysis. Uh, so the upfront piece, if you think we're trying to eliminate the need to do root cause analysis via prevention rather than reaction, and then on the back end, if something does come up or an inquiry does come up, having that ability to work at that speed of business to return that data back. Um, and that's where technology we've seen to be most valuable uh, in those areas. It's, you know, critical as you see these, and we'll start uh, going through these kind of each of these tools a little bit. And I got a couple of screenshots here to show everyone today, but the idea that, you know, you, there's some critical tools we've found to, to help in the industry, and that is program management. So like I said, GFSI, you know, BRC, SQF, CFIA, FISMA, allergen programs, you have a ton of them, right? You have your glass Hacked and broken plastics program. HACCP, mm -hmm. right, exactly. Thanks, Joe. Was, uh, don't ever want to leave HACCP out. Harp C for everybody, right, today. Uh, the idea that you need a system to help manage and monitor those programs, and that's both the documentation of that as well as the records and the forms that are being done with it. Uh, you also need that ability, those tools in your hands to help you capture data, but it's not just capturing data. And I'm going to talk about this here in a little bit because I know I have some ops folks on here too or some folks that actually go back and forth over the ops group. The idea is when, you, you know, I hear it constantly, well, I can enter this form on a piece of paper in 10 seconds, Dave, you know, can't slow me down. So there's two sides to smart data collection. One is efficacy of it, the idea that you could eliminate any human error or manual entry error, right, where you're actually receiving data automatically into a system. But then the other side of this is those tools in the hands of the end users where you have to go visually inspect something or go through something that those tools can actually speak you know, not speak, speak, but actually have logic built into them to say, hey, by the way, Dave, you entered this in and now you should do something else. Um, right. Pulling all of the data together in these tools is critical. We've seen in the industry a lot of uh, point solutions over the years. And, and the idea that now you're going place to place to place, almost similar to what you would do with a filing cabinet, an Excel spreadsheet, and a SharePoint site. So um, it's obviously important that you can have this centralized repository from a technology vendor as well. And then the, the final piece is how does that information get regurgitated back up? It's very important that, you know, as I mentioned earlier, you know, your executives looking at technology, they're going to come down to a bottom line of it. When you can help visualize them, what's actually occurring in your facility, when you can help talk to them about uh, shift three's performance over shift one's performance or more corrective actions in one area or whatever that is, that's really where you start to get in the value of a, a technology and, and start to show that ROI. Absolutely. Well, why don't we go through this a little bit? And so when we talk about the different or key areas of success, and again, the idea that, you know, not just having a document repository, not just having an app that, that doesn't take it anywhere, we're going to kind of take you through this. So, you know, first, first key um, technology tool is the program management automation. So take us through this, Dave, and I'm going to go ahead and put this into full screen so people can see this a little bit better. Yeah. So the um, the idea that the, uh, when you start talking about program automation, you'll notice here that uh, on the screenshot, it talks about documents, forms, tasks, and records. And really, if you break down your, your programs, that's what you have, right? You have a standard operating procedure that tells you what you're going to do, and you've approved that, and, and you review that annually or semi-annually or whatever it is. You then have forms, typically, that will back up that SOP, right? Here's, here's what you need to go do, Jill. You need to go capture this CCP every three hours or whatever it might be. Because of those forms, your people then have tasks, and those tasks need to be completed. So the idea that a system can actually then, uh, you know, make sure and monitor, if you will, that your programs are being followed. And then the last piece is the records, the idea that you need a system that, can, that pulls it all together. So when we talk about program management and automation, think about the areas. This is an example of a supplier. Uh, program, but again, I've used examples of your, you know, FISMA program, your BRC program, your SQF program, your allergen program. Um, all of those are actual programs that have those same traits. They have documents associated with them. They have forms associated with them. They have tasks that need to be done and records that need to be gathered. And that's how uh, how the system's actually laid out. And that's how the technology tool at Safety Chain uh, actually goes through and, and and starts to mimic those programs that you have in place today. And if you take me, take me one step further, Jill, I think now that we're in full screen, the idea here is that there, you know, the, your specific requirements, the other thing that we, heard, we learned a lot over the years here at Safety Chain was that 
the tools, the technology tools need to be flexible. Uh, I, I mentioned I see a couple of you on here that I know have multiple facilities that you oversee. Uh, many of you, I, even if you don't have multiple facilities, you've been in other facilities that may even do something very similar to what you do. However, they might run it differently. It might be different because of the location. It might be different because of the facility, because of the equipment, because of uh, the products, right, that they run, whatever that is. So the idea that technology needs to have that flexibility to be configured to the great programs that you've already created, right? And you have, everybody on this phone has created these great programs that your companies are abiding by and following. And the idea that the technology needs to be flexible enough to do that. Uh, and then at the same time, one of the big key elements of technology to kind of get into the weeds a little bit is this role-based access. So many of you on the phone are probably looking at it and go, wow, we do have that, but holy cow, how do I ever get there, right? It seems overwhelming. The idea that your end users would see the same things that they're seeing today, you know, instead of having, you know, three pieces of paper printed out on a clipboard, they have three forms that are on their tablet. They don't have to go searching through hundreds of things or thousands of forms to find the information. The, the role-based access to the system is very important, and then the ability for technology to alert Many of you are on the phone, right? You may not be down on the floor every minute, but the idea that something happens on that floor that you should be notified about, uh, an alert can be generated to you. And that's an important piece of technology as well. And then, you know, as you've already heard me talk about, the idea that you're, you know, you have this visibility into dashboards to monitor it, but the real piece of mind we hear from our customers when using technology is that they just feel feel better at night, right? They understand that all the boxes have turned green throughout the day and everything's been done. They can go home and they know everything's been completed properly per their program, right? And that's what technology allows you to do um, from, from that standpoint. Absolutely. And when you think about that, as far as a, a key component to that, so in order to have product automation be effective, um, the, the smart data collection and real-time analysis is a key component to that. You want to sort of share a little bit more about that? <laughs> I can probably share in, and hopefully this will make some folks chuckle on the phone, but probably in four words, don't slow down ops, right? <laughs> that's, that's the key <laughs> element with going to technology. You can't slow down our operation, right? So that's where the, this evolution in technology has really started to be uh, very cool, right? And we're excited about it here at Safety Chain. One, the data, you know, so, you know, I make a joke about don't slow down ops. Many times your forms and the information that's being captured throughout your facility is done both from an operational standpoint. You might have a QA person that goes out and does certain checks, but it's, it's that inter, intermingling, right, of those groups. And I hear it all the time from, you know, head of operations, hey, this is great, but what I can't do is slow down my line. I can't slow down my run because someone's fumbling with a tablet or someone's fumbling with a probe to go do something. So the key element when you're evaluating technology, especially, is that usability. Can I put it in our end user's hands? And, and I also think there's a myth here to be disputed, Jill, and that is a lot of times people look at technology and they go, hey, that's going to expedite our audit process or that's going to expedite whatever our walkthrough that we do. The idea that, you know, if you do a walkthrough, for example, that's a 45-minute walkthrough that you go through and you evaluate your facility, that's still the same time. You still need to do that 45-minute walkthrough to complete the form properly. But the idea is that technology should not slow you down in your process. So because once you get the data into the system, exponentially your organization will uh, see value. So the concept here, especially around smart data collection and, and real-time analysis is number one, it can't slow down the end users. So you have to make sure that it's quite usable and user-friendly and flexible, back to that program comment I made earlier. And then also the ability for the technology to have in the end user's hands that real-time verification, that real-time analysis. What did you just tell me, Mr. You know, operator or end user, and, and be able to discern what should happen next? And I think on the, the next slide there, Joe, I think that's a, an important part here as we keep talking about visibility, knowledge, and control of this, but also the prevention versus the reaction. Smart data collection allows you to get as close as you can to real time, right? Jill, you just entered in a temperature that's over our CCP. By the way, the form just expanded, and it says here are the three things you have to do. And at the same time, that technology is generating a notice to Jill's boss to say, hey, by the way, this just happened. All of that's applicable, right? That's configurable. But the idea that you have this, these tools in technology where you can start to really pull this all together. It's not just mobile applications, it's also equipment. 
you know, we've seen a really sudden increase in the idea that it's all kinds of equipment now that can start to generate data. And we're very excited about that. You have scales, you have temperature units, we have flow meters, you know, all these things that actually can capture data without manual entry, right? Without a manual person interrupting that process. There we can actually expedite it. Uh, the idea that you can create an online forum for your suppliers to have bi-directional communication with you. And then ultimately, again, it comes back to the idea that now this information has not only been verified real time, has been captured, you might even have photographic evidence of what occurred, right? Because of the technology. You can actually take a picture of, with this and it attaches it to the form. Uh, you get immediate notifications, but the end result, again, is that data, the data that you now have access to to say, hey, by the way, uh, you know, we're running high on the weights on line seven, or, uh, you know, the idea that the temperature is starting to heat up in the cooler in the back unit. The idea that all that information now becomes uh, readily available and available immediately using technology is, is really where we start to see not only mitigating risk, but then controlling those costs associated with the production. Absolutely, and we talk a lot about this in, in, as far as empowering your front line to really have the, not only being data collectors, but actually being knowledgeable about the impact of the data they're, they're collecting and the workflow around that. When you, when you talk about that, so now you have the automation, you're collecting in a whole bunch of different fashions, it's being analyzed in real time against specifications, requirements. Where does that lead us, right? It's, in, it's that central repository. You want to talk to us about yeah. that? And every, everybody's probably rolling their eyes right now, Jill, because they're like, I've heard Dave mm -hmm. say this already, right? This is speed of business, <laughs> right? This is the idea that you don't get a call from a customer and say, hey, what happened with lot number ABC? And you're like, hold on, I'll get right back to you. And you go and you find out, you know, from four different places what happened with lot number ABC. You actually sit there with them on the phone, you log into your system and you go, let me, let me filter for lot number ABC and I can tell you exactly what happened that moment. The idea that um, the, the, it's that first impression, right? We all kid about it when we're dating, right? That first time that, that you meet someone. The idea that the first time you receive that call, if you can show that you have all of this together in one place, it's a very nice first impression, right? Uh, to that customer, to that regulator, to that auditor, whoever it might be. Um, but then ultimately it comes back to, you know, having that ability to do the full root cause analysis. And that's something that our customers talk about a lot. I mean, you're talking about hundreds of thousands of pieces of data and records that all can be linked together based on key attributes, like an identifier, like a lock code, like a batch ID, like a time. What happened on shift three last week? You know, what happened last week on Monday when we got this complaint? The idea that you can go back in time and find that information is obviously very important. Right, and again, without steps one and two, right, the automation um, combination of how data is being captured, you're not going to be able to have this repository. So you sort of build on to that, right? So now that you've gone through all the steps, really, um, you know, and what's the, what's the phrase you always use, Dave? It's like this is the, the end game here, right, is really having that visibility <laughs> the cherry into on your top. operations. This, is, this hopefully makes people smile, right? This is what people spend hours on a day that I've heard in the industry, reeking information to produce these type of things. And this now just happens automatically, right, Jill, to your point. This is really the, the sauce, right? We have people and vendors that have, you know, monitors in their processing facilities that are showing trending. The idea that at the end of the day on the left side here, you're talking about record sign off. What records have been signed off on? Has everything been signed off on? Has everything been approved? That peace of mind at the end of the day, but ultimately this is where, and, and hopefully many of you on the phone, you know, who have, either looked at technology or considered technology, this is what comes back to your executives that says, hey, by the way, this will help us better uh, with our continuous improvement programs. This will give us insight into our weight monitoring program. This will give us insight into our supplier program, right, and how we're doing with incoming goods. The idea that now you actually have information and data to make business decisions on has been huge for organizations um, as they get into technology. Absolutely. And if you go Absolutely. into the next one, Joe, I think I've talked about a couple of these bullets here, but mm -hmm. the idea that, yeah. you know, it's the, it is, it's the operational oversight, whether that's real time, you wanting to know, Jill, what's happening this moment, or whether that's simply, hey, instead of me having to drive to the facility, I can actually log in and see what's going on and then be better educated or better informed before I even go there. Many of you on the phone I know actually will go out and do audits of your own facilities. The idea that this information is now available to do a document review, to even do certain records or data review yourself before you ever show up, giving you that insight, curbing maybe some of that travel as well, 
but giving you that actionable data is really the, I, I believe, Jill, and what we've heard from our customers and our customers' executives is that that's where the data lives and that's, that's where the, the dollars come from to buy technology, is it having that actionable data. Right, whether it's everyday execution of something that ends up being a kappa, as opposed to if you didn't catch it, it could end up being a rework or withdrawal or recall down the line, right? So it's, it's the idea of everyday execution as well as this ongoing performance trending. Um, you know, we, I know we often talk about our CIP solution and having the ability to really see is the process working, is it complying, is that wash going to be, should it be delayed or is it going to delay a production line? And that all adds up to, you know, bottom line risk and cost. How fun is that, Joe? And and sustainability initiatives and all that mm -hmm. for sure. It, that, that's fun stuff. But again, sort of tying it back together, right? So you have these four key things, but again, the end of the day, it comes down to your bottom line of, of your capability to deliver a safe quality product, and that's what technology um, can afford you to more effectively do. So just sort of in review, um, you know, we talk about the four key areas. Um, you know, program management automation tied together with the smart data collection, which will enable the real-time data analysis. You put that into your centralized records, a document repository, and then you really have data that's useful and that can drive the intelligence within your operations every day. And, you know, when you think about that, what does that get you? You know, it's ensuring the program compliance, it's that the concept of catching and managing issues earlier. That 24-7 readiness, whether it's an audit and inspection inquiry, and that capability to track and trend. So let's sort of talk about just very quickly, Dave, because I don't want to, um, we can take some of this offline, people are starting to ask a few questions, but so let's just talk about a few of our um, customers and some of the results that they're achieving. You want to take us through this one? A global ad process? Yeah, this is a good one. You know, uh, mm -hmm. you know, international agriculture company, uh, I think everyone can read the key elements here. and These will be available to you too, mm -hmm. but Everybody talks about customer complaints and the idea of um, product acceptance rates, right? And the reduction there is huge for them. The idea here was that the ability to real-time verify the information, make sure that it met the customer standards, uh, help to expedite the process and also not have them, uh, you know, can, they are actually shipping container ships of product around the globe. And the idea that um, none of those are outside of specification and they meet the customer requirements and also the regulatory requirements for different uh, countries as well. So it's a, it's a big deal, and it was definitely a bottom line value uh, to this organization, uh, for sure. The, uh, another example, just to give you another industry, the uh, fresh seafood processor. This might hit near and dear to some of you folks with multiple facilities, but uh, they spent a lot of time going around facility to facility, making sure that they were GFSI compliant, making sure their records were being managed properly, making sure they were managing the seafood asset program as well. Uh, the idea of the oversight is really what helped the organization and what got them excited, the ability to see this information from corporate, see how they were doing in their other facilities. And again, that's not just compliance, that's, um, you know, uh, grading of the fish and, and different receiving logs and so forth that are coming in as well. So giving that visibility across the organization to make decisions was huge, but also uh, eliminating travel costs and expense. Um, yeah. yeah, the next one's a fun Absolutely. one, Jill. This is fun too for all of you. I don't know that this ever happens, but uh, you know, some organizations, you, you're processing things at very high speed and you miss a, a CCP or a HACCP check or something like that, um, with the idea that you have to re, you have to make a decision, right? Do you rerun that back through all those, uh, all the detection equipment or do you do away with it or what do you do with it? Um, and the idea that this happens, it doesn't happen regularly in organizations, but a couple of times a year. And if you can stop that, you're ended up saving uh, millions of dollars within an organization on just one simple check, right? Not having to rework or rerun through the, the product. Um, so another good story there for sure. Um, and this one's fun. Jill just mentioned TLC and optimization and all of that. I know many of you on the phone have sustainability initiatives and the idea that <laughs> water usage and electricity usage and everything is very important to our organizations today. Um, we work with a big dairy processor that also has a very big chemical spend as well as water you should spend uh, out in the West and they, uh, you know, it's very key to making sure you're monitoring your water usage as well and we've helped them save a, a lot of money in using technology in this process and overseeing their process to give them insight and visibility uh, into those programs. Great, thanks. So when we talk about this, again, these are just a few scenarios, um, you know, depending on where you are in the supply chain and what your gaps are, what you're looking to accomplish. 
when we talk about ROI and truly assessing, is this something that you should be looking at? Can technology have an impact on your operations? It really comes down to two areas, hard costs and soft costs, many of which we've talked about already. But Dave, if you wanted to sort of take us through just the, you know, the quick hits on those, that would be great. <laughs> so I've spent, for everybody on the phone, uh, you know, close to a decade now selling this type of software in organizations. And what I can tell you for sure is every one of you on the phone today felt for that soft cost, right? That, that feels in your stomach. You're like, man, I do chase down a lot of documentation. I do spend a lot of time collecting and reviewing data. Um, you know, it, it takes me time to do that. Um, in my years of doing this, what I understand as well is that your executives in your organization uh, regard you in very high light, right? They say, look, I, I hired Jill to manage this and to do such a good job with it. Why does Jill need technology? And I think that's where those hard hard costs have come into play. The idea that um, mitigation, like we mentioned with one of the, the case studies there, you know, of rework or withdrawals, the idea of upfront, you know, doing inspections or even audits, receiving inspections or even supplier audits and having better performing suppliers. We don't want to send chargebacks. That's one of the things I learned in the industry very early, right, was you really don't want to send back chargebacks to your suppliers. What you want to have is just optimal producing, performing suppliers, right, it's kind of a pain in the neck. So the idea here is that when you when we talk about hard costs, um, not only in rework and withdrawal, but getting up and running, right? Operational costs. When's that start time? Has anyone had a delayed start time because of sanitation? Can we help with that sanitation program? Can technology help give you visibility into that program? Um, you know, the idea that you can uh, minimize not only uh, delays in coming in, right, because you can make sure all of the documentation is in place for that supplier and make sure all those ingredients have been approved, uh, but then the ability as you're going through the process throughout the day to help with those production areas. I, we have a customer that using technology figured out that on line seven, the metal detector popped more often than any other line. Well, why was that? So then they started actually looking at the metal detector, right? That was just simple things that are slowing them down. But those are areas very commonly uh, where it, it makes a lot of sense for organizations to make a technology investment. So I'm not minimizing the right side, Jill. I think the left side is very important when, when you're having that technology conversation up through organizations. On the right side, I, I'm assuming a lot of the people on the phone call can feel that pain today, and that's obviously important when you're looking at technology, too, because it's going to give you more time to put your eyes back on the floor, not your eyes sitting at a desk looking at paperwork that needs to be completed. Absolutely. But now that you did mention paperwork, I, we do find this um, these numbers interesting. It definitely is food for thought. <laughs> this is uh, this is a this is a study done by a benchmark group, right? And everyone had always was so proud when we first started doing this with their filing cabinets and so forth. Uh, we searched around for a little bit. There's a cost to just managing a filing cabinet, right? For sure. And this is uh, this is so, uh, a study that was done by a consulting group. You know, and, and you'll see the numbers here, but think about that. It, it takes time still to file that filing cabinet. It takes time to go maintain that filing cabinet. And that's what this is saying. This is a little bit of fun for everybody. Hopefully it made you chuckle a little bit, but there is, there's a cost of paper. And by the way, that paper is not very smart, right? It's not helping you out in any way. Um, so it does, it does cost you to maintain and, and keep that updated for sure, Joe. No. Absolutely. So when you sort of distill that down to what you're just talking about, you know, assessing if technology can help, we often take prospects and, and customers talk through this as well. Really, what are the areas that says, yes, we should be taking the next step? You know, and typically those go into two categories, operations, um, what your operations look like, and then performance, what your operations has experienced and or is highly concerned about. Um, so again, I don't know if you want to just take us quickly through this this uh, exercise here. Yeah, I, well, and this is something everybody will have. I don't know. You always get the question when we do these, and when I have talks and we we speak at conferences and trade shows, you'll say, "Well, is it the right fit for me?" And and truly, what it becomes, if you're looking at the right technology and the right solution that's flexible enough that you can just use, you know, portions of it or whatever's most important to you, then the answer to technology, you know, the answer, right? I mean. We've, we've lived through technology change before, right? We, we don't all go to banks anymore on Friday, right? We uh, a lot of times do enrollment of things online, you're banking online today, whatever it might be. We have smartphones, right? So technology is coming. We're not going to stop it. Uh, hopefully we all can be part of it. But, you know, the key elements is, you know, are you doing things on paper today? Do you have transparency? A lot of times with 
uh, initiatives like this, you're being overburdened. So you're either going to have to go ask for another person to manage the documentation or manage the records. So when we talk about headcount, you know, it's not as much of, hey, I want to eliminate headcounts. You're running a business that's very lean today, and we know that. The idea is that to continue to keep up with all of the requirements, you're going to have to continue to, to hire folks to get that oversight. Um, so, yeah, I, you know, just a couple of basic bullets. It's a typical question we get, Joe, of, you know, what, what would be important to me? And, you know, I think we all probably know it. You have customer requirements. You have some paper forms going through the facility that don't give you enough insight today. Um, you may have gone through an audit where you got a deduction for not having something signed off on and you didn't get the 98, you got the 97.5 or whatever. Um, but definitely look at some of the rework and the work that's happening operationally. I know on the phone today I have a lot of food safety and quality professionals. This is obviously going to take your operational counterparts too, and, and that comes from the performance side, even though it's on the, uh, I mentioned operations, but think about reworks and retrievals and programs that you have in place today or customer complaints you might be getting today uh, and how technology could better um, affect that change. No, absolutely. So, so again, with that, of course, we'd be remiss not to at least introduce um, Safety Chain. I know a lot of people on this call, and thank you for staying with us here, are familiar with Safety Chain and our solutions. But you know, when, when, again, distilling the key elements, really it is com comes down to eliminating paper and really unlocking that data for greater visibility, knowledge, and control across your operation. So, again, similar themes to what we've already talked about, but it's enabling you to ensure compliance um, from a preventive-based approach, control those costs, and then improve your operational efficiency, um, which also um, helps you reduce your risk. And those are the key elements that Safety Chain Solution um, affords you. Um, Dave, do you want to take us through really quickly the solution suite and the key elements? Well, as I was just mentioning in the assessment of whether mm -hmm. technology is right or not right for your organization, it's important to understand that Safety Chain does offer solutions, right? We offer packages of, uh, of programs. You don't have to go boil the ocean that everybody talks about. You know, you may just have a food safety initiative. We've had folks come to us and say, can you help us automate half of, you know, in Harp City, or we're preparing for that. Uh, understand it is a comprehensive technology, so it can support you in all the areas we just talked about today, but you can break it apart as well, the supplier compliance or food safety or food quality. Um, the key element is the underlying technologies we talked about. Having a technology that can actually automate your programs, facilitate those great programs you have in place today, help expedite the data gathering process, whether that's moving it up from prevention or to prevention rather than reaction. And then finally, having one system, right? This is truly one system. So if you're using supplier or food quality or whatever it might be, to report data back against in real time, um, giving you that root cause uh, analysis and access and all that fun stuff, Jill. But uh, yeah, we do break it down into packages and, and these are the solutions that are available. And I would assume that they probably look quite familiar to many of you on the phone in areas that you may be looking for technology. Absolutely. And of course, we, we always are very proud of our customers throughout the supply chain and sampling here, you know, just really showing that from depth and breadth of what we provide, um, whether you're, you're in produce and, and um, manufacturing, retail, um, we, we have a, a good cross-section of customers that are utilizing our solutions. So with that, in the interest of time, I did want to take us to this last step. We do have a few questions, so for people who can stay on, please um, thank you. Um, for a few people have actually said they have to log off, so I appreciate um, your time as well. But it's just a few follow-up items. Um, again, you will receive a recording um, the next few days of what we went through today. And a, a form will pop up when you close out. If you have any questions, any next steps, perhaps a consultation to assess the needs or a customized demo where you can actually see the product be on screenshots, um, absolutely available. We are at a, quite a few events, whether it's online or offline, FISMA Fridays, monthly series, I see a few people online today that are part of that program with Dr. David Atchison, the, uh, the tag group that keeps us up to date on all things FISMA, as well as the new LinkedIn group. Food Automation Show is right around the corner and down in Florida, as well as a produce show here in California. And um, I imagine a lot of people will be at the Food Safety Summit, so please be on the lookout for us. But with that, I have just a few questions. Dave, do you have a few more minutes to stay on with us as well? I sure do, Jill. 
No, I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, one question is coming in is just regards to GFSI. You had mentioned, um, I know you, you talked a little bit about program management with GFSI, and they just want to understand that a little bit further. You want to talk to them about that part? Yeah, sure. Our, our technology actually affords for uh, the, the code elements. So you have, uh, I don't know what GFSI scheme the question comes from, but SQF and VRC and FSSC 22000 and uh, th those programs have code elements like 1.1, 1.2, 1.3. 1 Many of you today have a, maybe you're used to seeing a three ring red binder where you store all of those SOPs in there and you may even have the associated forms with it. So what our technology allows for is you to actually uh, take that code, we have the code in the system that you can then tie those standard operating procedures to, uh, the system that makes sure that those documents are reviewed uh, and it captures a revision log, which is part of your audit requirement, right? A revision log of your actual SOPs and documents. And then the technology, as we talked about, also allows you then to capture those forms electronically and within our system, it'll roll up um, those SOPs, forms, and records to the actual code elements, allowing you to go through your audit. We've had some really good feedback from our customers about how their auditors have taken to this. Um, I mean, you know, some very nice, nice words. Our auditor loved it, right? It was a good way to go about it. So it's really aggregating it all together from that program-specific standpoint, Joe. No, oh, great, thank you. Um, one question we could dive deeper offline on this one too, but I think just a general, um, I'll put that out there as far as a general question on our pricing model, um, as far as if we price by user or by supplier. Um, and again, from a pricing standpoint, or just in general, for this system, the more users, the better, right, Dave? So we often talk about that, you know, that <laughs> yeah, we, we don't, don't want to limit the number of users on the system. Yeah, you never want to have a concern with that. We, we've we found that not to be successful to base pricing based on user. Uh, it's not something that's, I don't know, it just doesn't make sense that you have to worry about someone actually using the system when you need them to capture data or review a document or whatever it is. So our, our pricing is actually based on uh, with two simple fees, an upfront implementation fee and an ongoing annual maintenance fee. And that is based on scope or, or volume, if you will, right? So as I mentioned, there's packages there. If you just wanted to do food safety, it would be priced differently than if you wanted to do supplier and food safety and, and food quality. And in the like, it would be different if you have 15 facilities versus two facilities. Um, so that's what makes up the price, but we do do, here at Safety Chain, we do fixed fee bids uh, with, with two prices, an upfront implementation charge and an uh, you know, ongoing maintenance fee, but that is, that's, uh, that's it. We don't bill by users. We don't have to have you worry about, you know, if Jill comes on board that she's going to be using the tablet too to capture data. Uh, it really comes around to your operational processes, and that's how we, we base it on. And it, it is scalable, too. So we, as you saw on that uh, customer logo slide, right, we have million-dollar companies and we have multi-billion-dollar companies. Uh, the, the price can scale, again, based on that complexity. Absolutely. I'm going to go ahead and put, throw one more question, and then I will wrap up. And any questions we didn't get to, we'll take offline. I appreciate everyone staying on and, and for these questions. And this is a good follow-up we were just talking about as far as from implementation. Um, you know, what sort of support does Safety Chain provide in getting the technology up and running when you talk about configurability, but also to serve ongoing support? It's a, uh, you know, Jill, we should add that as part of, as you're reviewing technology, key elements to reviewing technology. Uh, one key element as you guys all go through this uh, and, and evaluate technology and go to implement technology is the idea that you, many of you probably haven't ever taken a paper-based form and made it a, a, you know, an electronic form. So it's important as you're looking at technology vendor and what we do here at Safety Chain is we provide actual a project manager and a business analyst and folks who have done tens of thousands of these forms and hundreds of these programs before to give you best practices. Because you don't, it's not a process of just replicating what you do on paper today. You know, you look at things like, should this be a drop down or should this be a radio button or, or whatever that might be. So at Safety Chain, we provide an implementation team as part of that implementation cost, as I said, to help you configure this, fully train you on it. You have all the tools you want to build your own forms and processes and notifications. But ongoing, we fully support anything we configure as well. So I mentioned there were two prices, part of that maintenance price is anything that we've configured will fully support because one thing's for sure, we know that times are changing. Your forms are gonna change. You're gonna be asked for a customer to have a change. So you wanna make sure that that technology vendor one, 
allows you to make your own changes with the forms as, as you see fit, and two, doesn't want to hold you over the proverbial coals if you want to make changes, because we know changes are going to happen. So it's important. We assign an account manager to every one of our accounts that supports our customers with a, a proven service level agreement as well. Um, and I think that's important when you look at technology, Joe. No, absolutely. And I think, you know, if I could just add a little bit thing about change is, you know, changes should happen if you're using a system like this because you're seeing areas of opportunity to improve and streamline processes or adjust um, programs, tasks, and so forth as a result of the data that you have. Um, so again, having that ongoing um, customer success team to ensure that your system is being leveraged and the success is being derived from it is, is, is uh, probably you know, one of our, our core um, standards at Safety Chain and we're very proud of. Um, so great. No, thank you for that. And again, I know in the interest of time, and you know, thank you. I'm surprised everyone still stayed on with us. We do try to um, be respectful of everyone's time, but we do hope today did give at least a high level overview of technology and the barriers that it does help overcome um, in, in everyday execution as well as ongoing um, improvement and performance. And if you uh, have any further questions, or if you'd like to see a live demo of all these different technology tools in action, um, absolutely reach out to us. Um, you'll get the form or info at safetychain.com. I know, again, we're talking to many people on the phone. I'm not going to call out names, but again, thank you, and I see a few customers with us as well. So again, um, we look forward to taking the next step. We hope this information was informative, and thank you, Dave, always, as always, for uh, providing uh, more information here. Thanks, everybody, for uh, joining. Probably Dave's fault for it being long, Jill, so thanks. No, <laughs> thanks they, for having me. No, they, the stories are good. Thanks, everyone, and have a good day.